Okay, now that we know how um, the basis of caches work and what makes them work, which is locality, let's look how we put a bunch of caches together uh, to form what we call a hierarchy. But before we get there, let's just stop to think a little bit about the cost of cache misses. The difference in, in, in time cost of a hit and a miss is huge, it could be 100x. That means that a hit can be 100 times faster than a miss. And just, just, just to make you see this in numbers, would you believe if I told you that a 99% hit is twice as good as a 97% hit in terms of time? And uh, in, this, in this example here, let me show you. We say, say that a, a cash hit costs one cycle, and the penalty of taking a cash miss is 100 cycles, okay? It means that the average access time for for 97% hit rate is uh, one cycle, which you always take the hit. You always take the hit time plus three percent of the time. You're going to pay 100 cycles, which is your penalty. That leads to a four cycle average cost. But now, if if you look at this number for 99%, that'll be one cycle for just the hit time, depending on whether it's there or not. Plus one percent of the time, you're going to pay 100 cycles. So that means that the average cycle is two. There's a two x uh, difference in average access time when you go from 97% hit rate to 99% uh, hit rate. That's why we often use miss rate more often than we use hit rate. Okay. So um, now um, let, let's just look at the, the basic concepts of uh, of metric of uh, cash performance metrics. Okay. The first one is called the miss rate. Okay. And the miss rate is a fraction of memory references that are not found in the cache. Okay, that's one minus the hit rate. Okay, so the hit rate is the percentage of accesses that hit in the cache. So one minus the hit rate is what we call the miss rate, which is the fraction of accesses that do not hit in the cache. Okay, and, and the typical numbers that we see for the first level of cache, which is the level of cache closer to the processor, we'll see what that means in more detail in a second, but for L1, the one that's closer to the processor, the typical number is between three and 10%, okay? Now, um, the hit time is the time it takes to deliver a cache line that the, uh, the, the, the time it takes to deliver a cache line that's in the cache to the processor so it can consume the data. Okay? And that also includes the time to determine whether the line is in the cache or not. That's why in the previous example, we included uh, the hit time even when computing the overall uh, miss penalty. Okay? So now the typical hit times for L1 is between one and two processor cycles. That means that the L1 cache is very, very fast. Okay? Now, the miss penalty is the time you, uh, you pay when you do have a cache miss and you have to go to the lower levels of uh, memory to bring the data. Okay? And that varies between 50 and 200 cycles. Okay? So that's why I said before, remember, there was about a 100x difference between a hit and a miss. Well, here's an example. So there's something that we call um, a memory hierarchy, which is putting a bunch of uh, types of memory together, a bunch of levels of memory together. And, uh, and the reason this, that this is good is that almost always when you have sm uh, faster and, and uh, smaller memories typically mean faster, they're, they're also more expensive, okay? So that means that suggests why not put a little bit of fast, expensive memory closer to the processor, backed up by a little bigger memory that's cheaper and a little slower, and compose that um, uh, all the way down to, to the disk given, okay? So, and uh, this is, this is um, profitable, this is good, because there are gaps between memory technologies, and these gaps are widening, okay? That's true, if, if you look at the performance of registers versus caches, that's, that's widening. Okay, as as uh, with new processor generations, and so is the gap between cache performance and DRAM performance. Okay, and then also between DRAM and disk, and so on. Okay, and if uh, well-written programs exhibit locality, that suggests that you can actually build progressively larger and slower memory hierarchies, and still give the illusion, from the processor point of view, that the memory is most of the time pretty fast. Okay, so these properties really complement each other beautifully to form a large pool of memory that behaves as if it were very, very fast, even though it's composed uh, in, 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 to a large extent by uh, slow, large memory, okay? 
So they really suggest organizing them in the form of a hierarchy, okay? By that I mean we have one memory backed by another memory, backed by another memory, and so on, okay? So, um, and here's another way of looking at it. The fundamental idea with a memory hierarchy is that for each, each level K of the hierarchy serves as a cache for the level below. And the level below is typically larger, slower, and uh, cheaper as well, okay? Well, why do they work? Because what I just said before, because of locality, programs tend to access uh, uh, data that's at level K much more often than level K plus one. Okay? Therefore, the, the storage at level K plus one can be slower, therefore larger and cheap, and also cheaper per, per bit. So again, repeating myself, the big idea of memory hierarchy is to create a really large pool of storage that costs as much as the cheap storage near the bottom, okay? But serves data to the program mostly by the upper levels, which is faster. Okay? So you can create the illusion of a large pool of memory uh, that is fast and cheap, okay? So let me give you an example. So here's an example of memory hierarchy. At the top of the hierarchy are registers, which as we saw before, they're different than caches because software has to use them explicitly, whereas memory caches typically uh, are used well, for all caches that you, you care to know about work automatically, okay? So, and then, so this is the register at the top, the, the CPU is right here, okay? Then you have registers inside the, inside the CPU. Okay, and then right very close to the processor, we have L, what we call the L1 cache. That's backed by a um, L2 cache, some cases on chip, some cases uh, off chip. Let me call it right on or off chip. Okay, that's, all, that's backed up by main memory made of DRAM. That's backed up by disks in case you have virtual memory, which we're going to see later in this, in this course. And you can even imagine this being backed up by caches that are in the network that you know, they go beyond your machine, okay? And in fact, chances are that you guys also have, you know, file caches and you have caches, web servers, and so on, okay? Great, so now one more example. Uh, let's look at the, the cache hierarchy of the, the Intel Core i7, which I'm sure many of you have, okay? So the, the Core i7 has, for each core inside this multi-core processor, has, of course, it has registers, but it has an L1 cache for data and a, an L1 cache for instructions, and it has a unified L1 cache per core, okay? And then there is uh, a um, unified L3 cache shared by all cores in the system. Okay, so now just inside one, just inside the chip itself, it has multiple cores, there's already three levels of cache, L1, L2, and L3. See you soon.